Okay, so we've isolated power. Now we need to get this cover off. So it looks like we also need to get this cover off because the terminals are up behind him. There you go. You might have to bring him up a little bit and then over like that. Cool. Okay, and then now you've got this inner cover here, but I want you to get your uh, multimeter out and just verify that there's no voltage in here by reaching up onto these lugs and onto those. And you can just go from lug to anything metal in there and that'll verify there's no voltage. Let's use something metal in here. Some nice bare steel. You always want something that doesn't have paint on it. And then you're trying to reach, maybe take your little safety probe off, just off the one. And you're just trying to get your probe up in there. That looks good. Nothing there. Good. And then try over here on what we know is the line, the single phase line coming in. Nothing there? Nope. Great. Okay, so now we know it's safe. And you're going to disconnect the motor leads. Mm -hmm. But before you do that, you always want to make sure you've got it written down somewhere. So you put them back in the same direction, okay. same rotation. So here we're black, yellow, red. And then you can use your linesman's there to just grab here and twist like that. There you go. There you go. Cool. Now you can just get them out by hand probably. And you just got to get them loose enough to get the wires out. You're going to pull them out so they're nice and workable. Yep. And we don't want them touching anything else. We want them floating. So where's your ground wire, your equipment ground? So that's going to be your ground reference. We're going to use the megometer and we're going to check the resistance between each wire and ground. Okay. It's hopefully going to be in the millions of ohms. So get your megometer. Yep. And then we want it in common and insulation test because that's the mm -hmm. kind of test we're going to do. We want the ground that's coming with these guys. Yeah. Wait, with these guys? Yeah. Because these are going to the motor. Yep, exactly. So now you can clip your common probe onto that copper right there. And once you clip it on, give it a nice pinch. Put it down in the teeth, down in the back of the mouth. Yeah, there you go. And then give it a nice pinch. Yeah, like that. Perfect. So that's a good connection. Now you're going to do your insulation tester. You're going to start with line one and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to pinch and then you're going to go like this. Just kind of make sure it's a good connection. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've got our service spreadsheet. And I'll write down all the answers you get for your meg test. So this is a 240 volt single phase motor and it's running out at 240 volt three phase or 208 three phase. So we want to take the motor that the, the voltage that the motor is rated for and multiply it by two. So we're going to go to 500 volts DC. So you can spin your wheel over to 500 volts DC. Now you're going to, without touching anything metal, and without touching any, letting any of these wires touch anything else. So you every, see how everything's floating? Yeah, nothing's touching anything else. Go ahead and hold down the test button until I say to release it. So see how our voltage came up and our mega ohms are climbing? We're gonna give it about 10 seconds. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Good, you can release. So we're gonna call that about 500 mega ohms, 550. So go ahead and move it over onto line two. It would be yellow. Very good. It's a nice good crimp on there. And you're going to hold down that test button for a good slow 10 seconds. And we see how our voltage is up to 500. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. About 550. Our 500 volt DC scale maxes out at 550, so once it hits there, it's just going to say greater than 550, which is mm -hmm. great. That's an excellent reading. Let's do line three. This well's not very deep, so 10 seconds is plenty of time to charge everything up and get a good reading. A deeper well, we'd hold it for a lot longer. Okay, go ahead, hold it down. Let's see, climbing. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Yeah, good. I'd say all lines about 540 ohms is safe. 540 million ohms. See the mm -hmm. M there? So that's millions of ohms. Good. So now the next test we're going to do, we're going to do winding resistance. So the insulation one belongs over here and the ohms belongs there. So let's try that. Now that we've moved this to here and you can see if you look on the probes see the wiring diagram for the probes yeah insulation to common 
ohms to common, so we need those two connected. Well, make sure you always, before you run tests, you always make sure you're in the right function, we're in ohms, mm -hmm. and always make sure your probes are good and everything looks good. So now hold down test. 0 0.4, fantastic. Now do one to three. Zero point four, very good. And now two to three. Zero point four, awesome. So those are good, healthy winding readings between the windings, and the insulation test of ground is also really good. We track all of this information over time. The health of the motor will be reflected in the insulation of the windings resistance to earth. So as the motor gets older and older and start the insulation starts to break down, we'll be able to be ahead of the curve and prepared for motor failure if yeah. we can see, oh, the insulation's starting to get very low. 550 mega ohms though is a very healthy motor. It doesn't show any signs of any kind of imminent failure, but we'll still write it down on our spreadsheet to keep track of it over time.